Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the position of the Deputy President of Kenya is very high. It is a very high calling. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, as we make a decision on the Deputy President of Kenya, I want to remind him that of those to whom more is given, indeed, more is expected of them. And he should not feel that he is being victimized because, Mr. Speaker, the highest standard of this constitution in 2013, by dint of lack of integrity, the Deputy Chief Justice, Nancy Barasa, lost her job, merely because she pinched the nose of Kwamboka. The Deputy President indeed did worse than pinching the nose of somebody. Mr. Speaker, the Deputy President, seeing the allegations against him, I can't imagine that he moves around with the moninga of man, of faith, and truthful man. Mr. Speaker, if really we must talk about faith, May I remind the Deputy President of a man of faith, a man of letters called Bill Paul. Bill Paul said, man of faith, that integrity is like virginity. You lose it only once. And when you lose it, you can never get it back. The Deputy President has lost that virginity of leadership. Coming from a Mr. Speaker, coming from a community that paid for the price of inflammatory speeches in Likoni, in Molo, and in Transoya, if I had time, I would discuss what some of my relatives went through, including Pastor Liai from Ichina village. Mr. Speaker, during the tribal clashes of 1992 and 1997. I would like to remind the Deputy President of the post-election violence of 2007-2008. One of the reasons why we had to have this progressive constitution that will be removing him, hopefully, this evening from office. Mr. Speaker, even as we ask the Deputy President to leave office, we must insist that the DCI and the ESCC and other investigative institutions must pursue this matter beyond this vote. I have on mind, Mr. Speaker, the activities of the intricate web of companies up to 22, so to speak. The reason I believe young Mutuse could not bring all this, dear senators, colleagues, is because effort requires money, requires time to do all that research. Some of them you have to do glance time for you to get information. I believe that if the deputy president had taken the dock, we were going to completely undress him. We would have asked him to justify what activities each and every one of those companies was doing. It's part of the reason why he stepped down, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I have evidence, which I don't wish to be part of the, the case, that as soon as the deputy president's brother died, the wife went to the corporate branch of the cooperative bank and started crying there that the manager should stop the deputy president from operating these accounts. Mr. Speaker, finally, the deputy president must be investigated 
for the role. Senator Eddie. 